Hi, third grade. Today we're going to continue on with unit seven by completing the week one, day two lesson. So let's get started with our drill sounds warm up. Repeat after me. A, Alaska, a. Uh. E, Pete, e. I, animal, a uh, or e. Eh. I, champion, e. O, no, o. U, pupil, u. U, flu, u. Y, cry, i. And Y, baby, e. Nice job. All right, now we're going to go ahead and listen to our new concept of the day. Here we go. Hi, I'm Mrs. Keo, and I'm back with you today for Unit 7, Week 1, Day 2. Let's get started. I want you to take a look at this vowel Y. What are the two sounds that the vowel Y makes? That's right. Y cry I and Y baby E. It says Y cry I in a one-syllable word and Y baby E at the end of a two-syllable word. Now, watch me make this word. Keep an eye on this. What word did I just make? Cry. That's right. Now, I would like to have this word say cried. What will I need to do? I'm gonna drop this Y and add ED. But what sound is the letter Y making in that word? I. So I'm going to take that away, bring up my I, and now say this with me, cry, cried. This letter keeps the same sound that the Y was making in that base word. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, here we go. All right, let's read this word. Empty, emptiness. So in that word, what is my base word? Empty. That's right. So in the word empty, let me write that word here. That's a change. In the word empty, I had to change my Y to I before I could add my N-E-S-S. What sound was the Y making in this two-syllable word? It was saying E. So that's why the I here continues to say E in empty, emptiness. Okay. Good work on that. Now, let's move on to this. We're gonna work on how you mark up these words, how you spell them and how you mark them up. Let me put this up here. So let's take a look at these words. This word is empty, empty. So to get this word, I had to have my base word. What is my base word in empty? Empty. So I'm going to spell my base word here. So I had plus ed. So that's how emptied is empty plus the suffix ed. How about here, tries? What is the base word of tries? Try, try. Try plus es equals tries. What is the base word of studied? Good job. Study. Study plus ed equals the word study. Happier. What is the base word of happier? Happy. Write that right here. Happy plus er is happier. The last word I have here is fried. What is the base word? That's right, fried. Plus ed equals fried. So now, let's take a look at what we have here. I'm gonna look at this first, this middle row. So when I mark up this middle row, 
I'm going to scoop it. So you're going to have to rethink back to how do we split up those syllables? I think you know how to do that now. If not, keep an eye out. So I have M D. Can you see that marker? I don't think you can see that marker. Let's use this one. Here we go. Try again. M D. So this is an open syllable. And what sound is the Y making? E. It's making its long sound, so I put my E right there, my macron, and then my E above it. Say this word. Try. I scoop it. It is an open syllable. This is making a long sound, but what sound is the I making in that one syllable word? Or that Y, I tell you it to you. What sound is a Y making? That's right, I. Okay, let's scoop this word. Study. Here's my open syllable. This is the long sound. What sound is that Y making? E. These little bars mean sound bars. All right, here's my word happy. Happy. Here's my open syllable. What sound is the Y making? It's a long sound. It is E. And our last word here, fry, open syllable. What sound does that Y make in that one syllable word? I, fry. <laughs> Good job. Now, let's come back. So now we know how to mark up those base words. And we did that so that we could see what each Y is saying in that word. As we, because that's what we're going to be looking at. So now let's take a look at our word that has the suffix added to it. So here we have empty, empty. So I'm going to mark this one with like this. M, D, circle my suffix. And right here, this is still an open syllable, right? And so what sound is the I making? What sound was this Y making? E. So what sound is this I making? E. So I'm going to put the macron above that one. That's all you do. Isn't that cool? Let's try another one. So I have try, tries. So let me go ahead and scoop my base where he's right here. Circle my suffix. What sound is the I making? Tries. What was it making over here? Long I. Same thing there. Do you see the pattern? Let's try this one. Here's the word studied. Study, study. So here we go. Study, circle my suffix. This little open syllable here, what sound is the I making? That's right, it's making the long E sound. <laughs> Good work. Here we go. We have happy, happier. So let's scoop this word. Happy, circle my suffix per. What sound is the I making here? E, that long E. And in fried. Let's see, scoop my base word, circle my suffix. What sound is the I making? Long I. There you go. How's that feel? You can see the patterns here. You can see the sound that that Y is making. And when I change that Y to I so that it can add my suffixes, that I takes on that same sound. Look for those patterns as you're going. All right. Now, for this next part, you are going to need your dry erase boards and a marker and possibly an eraser. So if you're in the classroom, you can pause this video and go get your dry erase board. If you are at home, pause the video, get your dry erase board or a piece of paper and a pencil. And we'll get started. Welcome back. Okay, so today we have talked about the, the vowel Y and what happens to it when we add our suffixes. And then we're talking a lot about how we spell and then the sounds that that Y makes when we add that suffix to it. So now we're gonna work on you writing the words, but we're gonna follow a pattern together. So follow my pattern. Get these out of the way. Here we go. So I'm gonna dictate, so you're gonna be my echo. Here we go. The first word is copier. What is the base word? That's right, the base word is copy. 
write that on your dry erase board. I'm just gonna write it on here. Use the lines down here. Don't use the boxes up above, use your lines. Copy. But what was the whole word? Copier. So here I want to get, make the plus sign, like you're adding something like we do in math, and then ER. Because to get copier, we're going to add this ER to it. Now, do you remember what to do? To add a, e, a suffix that begins with E, we need to drop the Y and add I, and then add ER. So let's do that together. Just on your line below, so it's C O P, drop that I, add E R. Copier. Now let's go ahead and mark this up. So let's scoop the base word. Are you ready to scoop the base word? Here we go. Copy, and then we circle our suffix. How'd you do? Now, let's mark what sound is that I making? Copy. It's making the E sound. So I'm going to mark my little E, the macron above it, and then my sound bars. And that's it. Okay, let's erase. That was copier. Let's do another word. Be my echo. Coziness. What is the base word? Cozy. There we go. So let's go ahead and write the base word cozy. Co Z. Then I have cozy, but I'm going to add what was the whole word? Cozy ness. I'm going to add my N E S S. Coziness. Okay, let's go ahead and make the word coziness happen. Change the Y to I, add an ESS. So here we go, let's do this together. C-O-Z-I-N-E-S-S. -S. Cozy, coziness. Now let's scoop it, scoop the, the syllables. Here we go. Co-Z, circle my suffix. Now in this, we're gonna look at this syllable. What sound is the I making? Cozy. That's right, saying E. Mark that E with the macron. But the sound bars. And there we go. Cozy, coziness. Coziness is a state of being really cozy, warm on the couch, maybe you're under a blanket. If it's winter, that is what coziness is. So I hope you have a good cozy feeling <laughs> about what we just did. There's some coziness going on with our syllables that we've just been doing. You did a lot of work today. Well done, and I will see you soon. Okay, next we're going to review some of our sound alike words that we've had recently and we're getting to get we're going to get a new pair of homophones. So let's review some of the ones from unit six. All right, say this word. Hi, spell it with me, go. H, I, and then show me our signal. Right, you wave hello, that's an easy one. This one, say it. Hi, spell it. H, I, G, H, and what does this mean? Yeah, there's a very big distance. It's very high, very tall. We did the mountain peak. Good. This word, say it, by. Spell it, B-Y. Do you remember our signal for this word? If you're by something, you're near it. So I did, you know, you're pointing right by you, right next to you. And don't forget, this one also means the book was written by the author. The Painting was painted by the artist, okay? So if someone did something. But our signal is right by you, right near you. All right, this word, say it. By, spell it. B-U-Y, good. And do you remember the signal? 
you're spending money, you're smiling usually because you like to buy things, right? Very good. This one, say it, buy, spell it, B-Y-E. And what is the signal? Waving goodbye, right? I was about to say this word. Oh, yeah, this one. Say it, O, spell it, O-H. And do you remember the signal? Just make this facial expression. It's very silent. It's just nonverbal. Very good. When you're expressing a feeling, you might go, oh, or oh. <laughs> Different ways to say it, depending on the circumstance. This word, say it, O. Oh. Spell it with me. O-W-E. If you owe someone, do you remember this one? If you owe me your homework, give it to me right? Owe me. You could owe somebody money. You could owe somebody, you know, like I said, a homework assignment. All right. Now we're going to get into our new sound alike word. Let's look at it. Mm. Say it after me. Flower. Flower. Let's spell this sound alike word together. Go. F-L-O-U-R. Now, Flower is fine grains used in baking. Fine grains used in baking. So if you want to go ahead and get out your student notebook, let's add these definitions as we are talking about them. So flip in the back to your sound alike section, find the F's. And you might be beating me at this, A, B, C, D, E, F, O, yes, on page 95. Go ahead and copy, pause the video and copy this definition down, please, on page 95. Okay, now that we know F-L-O-U-R flour means fine grains used in baking, let's go over A signal to remember that by. Here's what I'm going to do. When I, if I ever bake something, usually I use flour when I am making um, pizza and I'm rolling out dough and I sprinkle flour. So go ahead and sprinkle some and then roll your rolling pin. I sprinkle flour so that the dough is not so sticky and it doesn't stick to the countertop. So let's practice that again. Sprinkle your flour and roll your rolling pin because that kind of flour is used in baking. All right, now let's take a look at our second one, the other flour. Let's spell this one together. Go ahead. F-L-O-W-E-R, flour. Now, when we're talking about this flour, I think you know what we mean. This one is the part of a plant with colorful petals. So again, on page 95, you're going to pause the video and copy this definition down for flower. All right, now when we talk about a signal for the part of a plant with colorful petals, I think we should think of a rose, a flower. Grab the flower from, from like if it's at a flower shop, pick up the flower and you sniff it, right? and make a, you like, you know, usually flowers smell very, have a nice aroma. So uh, pick the flower, smell it. Very good. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and play a game of guess which one. So if you have your dry erase board and marker out, get ready because I'm going to say a sentence and you're only going to write down the sound alike word that I used in that sentence. If you don't have the dry erase board, paper and pencil will work just fine. Are we ready? All right, here's your first sentence. Do you like those dried flowers in the vase? Write down the sound alike word and notice I said flowers, it was plural. So is it this flower or this flower? Write it down. Do you like those dried flowers in the vase, this one or this one? 
All right, answers in. Let's spell what you wrote, go. F-L-O-W-E-R-S, right? Because I made it plural in that sentence. Flowers, do you remember the signal again? Pick it, <sighs> smell it, okay, good. Next sentence, we need flour for cupcakes. We need flour for cupcakes. Which flour makes the most sense in that sentence? Write it down quickly. All right, time's up. Let's spell it together. Go. F-L-O-U-R, flour. Yeah, that's the ingredient used to bake. Now, could you draw a flour with icing? Sure. But this one says we need flour for cupcakes. So do you remember the signal for this flour? Sprinkle it down, roll your rolling pin. Very good. Try this one. The flowers here are plentiful. The flowers here are plentiful. Oh, I heard a plural again. Go ahead and practice write which sound alike word. All right, let's spell it, go. F-L-O-W-E-R-S, because I made it plural again, very good. Meaning there are a lot of flowers there, they're plentiful. Okay, she is emptying the cup of flour into the pan. Which flour are we dealing with here? Let's spell it. F-L-O-U-R, flower. Sprinkle it, roll it out. Good job. All right, let's try this one. My son is much happier. Is it this son or this son? My son is much happier. Write it down and then we'll spell it. All right, go ahead, let's see. S-O-N, son. Do you remember the signal for that one? Remember, it's a little boy child who grows up. Very nice. All right, and the last sentence. That is a plentiful sum. Ooh, which sum? This or this? That is a plentiful sum. This might be a little bit tricky. Oh, let's spell it S-U-M, sum. Now you should remember that that's your answer to addition, but it also means a large sum of money. So I'm thinking in that sentence, it means that is a plentiful sum of money, sum of cash. That means there's a lot there. Maybe you had a garage sale and you were able to sell a lot. So that is a plentiful sum, sum of money that you got there. Okay. All right. Third grade, that is all I have for you today. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.